To finish off this project, we're going to add one last feature. We're going to require users to authenticate themselves using either Face ID or Touch ID. Now, this makes sense because there's a lot of personal data in here. If places I'd like to go and see, it's important we be respectful of that. But it also allows me to give you an opportunity to try an important new skill in a practical context. First, we need some new state inside our view model here to track whether the app is currently locked or unlocked. And so we'll say in here, there's a new at publish property, var is unlocked is false. Second, if you miss the earlier video, it's important you go ahead and find your target options or target then info and make sure you have the key in here already, privacy, face ID, usage description with some text in here. If you don't have that, just right click somewhere else and choose add row, then add that particular key and some text behind it. You do have to have that. Touch ID is done with a string in the code, face ID is done as a configuration option right here. So please do that before continuing. Third, we have to, in our uh, view model, add an import for local authentication. That's Apple's authentication framework. That's all the easy stuff. Now for the hard part. If you remember, the code for biometric authentication, i.e. Face ID and Touch ID, um, was a teensy bit unpleasant because it has Objective-C code behind it, and it's got its roots, and so it's always a good idea to get it as far away from SwiftUI as you can. So we're going to make a special authenticate method in our view model that handles all the biometric work for us. So I'm going to worry about it. This means making an LA context so we have something to check and perform biometric authentication against. Um, second, it means asking if the current device supports it in the first place. Do you support uh, biometrics or not? Uh, third, if it does, go ahead and run the request providing a closure to run when it completes. Uh, when that finishes, when they've identified correctly with their face or their finger or whatever, check the result. And if that result was successful, then we'll set us is unlocked to be true, just like we did in the previous video. So we'll say down here, uh, func authenticate, make our context first, a new LA context, make a little NS error optional where any errors can go. And now if context can evaluate the policy, device owner authentication with biometrics, with error, ampersand error. Then our reason string is, please authenticate yourself to unlock your places. That's fine. Let's put that into the same uh, thing for our target as well, so it matches. Uh, like uh, this, there we go. And then, uh, we can go ahead and evaluate the policy. We can say context evaluate policy, device authentication with biometrics, with the reason being our reason. And the reply, this is where we get back success, but also any further errors, so we'll say authentication error, in. If we are successful, brilliant. Self is unlocked is true, else, it didn't work to do something else. And if we're down here, it means we have no biometrics. Show an alert, show a passcode, or it's down, whatever, whatever you want to, it's down to you. Um, so remember, the string here is used for touch ID. The one in the project options is used for face ID, for Apple reasons. And now we're going to make a small adjustment that is fairly easy to do if you see the video like this. Uh, in our content view, we have this big old Z stack here. It's basically all our UI, all this stuff here. And that should only be shown, all this code here, should only be shown if our view model uh, is unlocked. View model is unlocked. Like that. Else, don't. <laughs> Else show a button here to unlock. Uh, so we've got this massive, massive if block. All the previous code is only shown if we have unlocked, otherwise we don't, like that. Uh, and now we can go ahead and put a button in here. We can fill this in with a button saying something like uh, unlock, oops, unlock places, calling model authenticate, oh, sorry, view model authenticate, like that. 
Give it some styling, like a little bit of padding, a little bit of background dot blue, foreground of uh, white, for example, and clip shape of capsule. So it's nice and clear. Then press Command R. Give your code a try. Run it back. Now, that's the first time you've used Face ID on your device. You're going to need to go to the Features menu and choose Face ID and then make sure Enrolled is checked. Otherwise, it will do nothing. There's no error handling in our code right now. Make sure you enroll your device in that. And when you're ready, press Unlock Places. It'll say, are you quite sure? Yep, sounds good to me. And this is the, the Face ID prompt appears here. And I go Features, Face ID, and then Matching Face, Simulate Success. And we should see it worked. So our UI is now unlocking. However, you might, if you look carefully on my screen, spot a small problem. Yes, the UI works in Simulator. I can see Fort William and Central London, whatever, is all there fine. But you'll see a little message here in Xcode Debug Console, uh, which is a Swift UI alert to us. And also in Xcode, this little purple diagnostic thing appears here. Uh, and that purple triangle is a runtime issue, which is Xcode's way of flagging up code that happens at runtime. When our code's actually running, it does something it really ought not to. In this instance, our error is here. Unlock equals true. And it's saying publishing changes from background threads is not allowed, which if we run it through a Swift translator, it means you're trying to change the UI. Because toggling unlock to be true means show the Z stack of the map and so forth. So you change the UI, but you're not doing it from the main actor, and that's going to cause problems. Now, this might be quite confusing because we literally added that main actor attribute up here saying, I want all the code from the class to run in the main actor and therefore be safe for UI updates. That's what main actor does. However, I added an important proviso if you want to watch the video uh, previously, unless we specifically say otherwise. So it all runs in the main actor unless we specifically say otherwise. And in this instance, we did say otherwise. Well, that might not be obvious. Down here, we're telling Face ID or Touch ID to evaluate the user, scan their face, read their thumbprint, whatever. That's done by Apple. It's done by iOS, by system, outside of our program with the fancy sort of animation thing happening. It's not us doing the actual face check. It's Apple. And when that whole process completes, Apple will call our completion closure, this thing here. And it'll do that saying, hey, it worked or it failed or whatever, but that won't be called on the main actor. Despite our at main actor attribute, that'll be called however Apple feels like it, usually on a background task. And so this bit is actually on a background task, a background thread it's saying, not the main actor. And so we're causing problems for ourselves. The solution here is to make sure we change is unlocked on the main actor not on this background task. That can be done by starting a new task, then calling await main actor not run, and then passing in that same code. So we'll say, if we're successful, great. Give us a task with await main actor dot run, and put that code in there, like that. And that effectively means start a new background task, then immediately use that background task to jump across the main actor to queue up some work to make is unlocked true. That's what it's doing. And that works. That code will have no more runtime issues, but we can do better because we can tell Swift that this task actually should already run on the main actor. The, the closure, this bit here, we can say, that needs to have the at main actor attribute, run the whole task on the main actor. So rather than saying, give me a background task, which then goes back to the main actor, which then does unlock true. Hey, doggo. Obviously I like actors, oh, doggos, sorry. Both here. Rather than doing that whole background main actor bounce thing, skip that entirely, come on. Skip it entirely. And instead, run the whole task's body on the main actor. So we can do, 
this task at main actor in and then is unlocked equals true like that so we're saying this whole closure we're passing to the task that thing should run in the main actor that's what's happening here and with that code it's exactly the same thing our error will now go away come on then it'll now go away because we aren't changing the, the ui on a background task anymore it'll always be on the main actor so i'll press unlock places here there's our little uh, ui i'll press matching face it unlocks no more error no more purple rectangle that's this whole code done and that's another app complete good job